Hey creative friends, what's up? Welcome to another notepad video for me because you know, I love to make notepads. And um, I made one recently, a little while ago, that was a seaweed design, it was a bigger notepad. And I mentioned in that video that I'm trying to design a bunch of pieces to be like a collection and to prototyping to maybe release it sometime in like spring 2024. I, I don't know, we're gonna figure it out. Um, but the notepad I'm showing you today is this one. It is a um, horizontal notepad. It's glued along the long edge on the top here, which I haven't really done much of before. Um, it's my usual 30 pages um, notepad. It's an acorn design. I think it's super cute. Um, this video is going to be showing you just how I set up the file and then how I illustrated it. And I think I'm gonna spend a little bit more time explaining like some of my design choices going into this one and then I'll just show you the manufacturing as well because it's fun and interesting. If you haven't seen any of my notepad videos before, uh, my to-do list notepad is the most thorough in terms of the gluing and cutting process, but I'll still include all of the steps in this video too. So um, just if you have more questions, that's just another video to watch. Um, and I also have a video on how I price notepads if I was gonna be selling the handmade ones. I have sold my handmade ones, uh, but I don't wholesale them and there's a whole rationale behind the pricing. Uh, I have another video about that. I just, uh, apparently notepads are my thing and that's cool. So um, yeah, I won't keep rambling on. This is what we're gonna work on today as a project. Uh, you'll see a close up during the process and also when I'm finished. I hope you enjoy. Let's hang out and make some crafts, okay? All right, so as I mentioned, we are building the base of this in Canva. This isn't like a tutorial. I'm not gonna go super slow, but it's also not very complicated. I'm making a canvas that is the size of the pad I wanna make, which is five inches high, seven inches wide. And I'm basically just gonna add a background color and then a box with some lines in it, and I'm gonna draw on top of that. I don't really like drawing um, uh, shapes, like even perfect shapes in Procreate. It's easier for me just to make this in Canva first. So I added a box to this um, document, rounded the corners, and I'm just making it bigger. Um, I believe I'm actually going to have a white background with this cream colored box. Um, if you want to add a box quickly on, in Canva, you just tap R for rectangle on the keyboard. You can tap L for line, and those are the two features I'm using here. Uh, making my line white, and I'm just using weight two, uh, a two line weight, and i um, just going to play around with it and fill the box with the lines. When I gave this uh, notepad to my mom, actually, she was like, oh, is it for recipes? And I guess just the orientation looks like a recipe card. I don't know, so just food for thought. If you're designing something similar, it's kind of a recipe card vibe. Um, Canva is pretty easy to work with if you haven't used it before. You, If you've watched other videos of mine, you know I use it all the time for bases, for stationery and stuff. Um, yeah, so that's, I mean, this is pretty much it. Um, like I said, this is not exactly a tutorial, but if you've used Canva before, you might be able to tell what I'm doing. This is it. I'm just exporting this file as a PNG, and then I'm going to um, airdrop it to my iPad, open it up in Procreate, and that's where I'm going to do the artwork on top of it. Pretty straightforward. And here it is on my iPad. Um, yeah, my iPad is just a, like, five or six year old basic iPad. I don't have a pro. And lately, um, you may have seen another video with my big stationery. I have been doing my motifs, my little doodles on paper, um, and then photographing them on the iPad and you doing that to get it into my iPad. Wait, what am I trying to say? I'm photographing it, as you can see here, with the camera on the iPad. I import that photo into Procreate and then in a new layer, see there it is in Procreate, that photo, in a new layer, I will use a pencil brush and I'll trace over it. And that will make my line art that I color in after. And I'm finding this very helpful because as much as I love Procreate, I don't find I'm good at doing like concept art there. I can't really do my initial sketches there. I'm not sure why, that's just me. Um, but I am doing each of these little items in a separate layer, but I'm not doing the different parts of the acorn, for example, like in different layers, I'm doing the cap and the what do you call the bottom half of an acorn? There's the cap and the body. I'm not, I don't know. Um, I'm doing them in different colors, but they're all in one layer. So this is just really sped up because you don't need to see the details of tracing for all of these. I chose this motif because I wanted to do something that was sort of more natural, um, but also like 
I don't like to do just florals or just leaves. I like there to be something else as sort of an accent. And I thought acorns. So that's why there's a lot of oak leaves mixed in with this design. And I also kind of found this, I don't know, I, this, this was a bit of a challenging design for me. And I can't really tell you why, because obviously it's a very simple image, but I think um, it wasn't until the very final stages of shading that I found the image kind of came together. I th like, I always, my art is always sort of on the naive side, like I want it to look a little bit childlike, um, but there's a, there's a line in which you don't want it to be too childlike. I don't, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a threshold. Uh, and for a while I was feeling like this is a little bit too, too much for me, but it came together in the end, so I'm happy. Um, what I'm doing here is I've put all those little doodles in a layer, uh, or in a group, and then I've duplicated that, and I turned off one of them as a backup in case I mess something up, because what I'm about to do is grab each one individually and arrange it around the frame. Um, and some of these end up being like off the page a little bit, which that's why I make the duplicate, because it's kind of accidentally cropped some of it. If uh, I need to fix something, that makes it easier. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. This wasn't a necessary step. This is just, I'm just so um, nervous about accidentally doing things I can't undo. Um, yeah. But once I get this all arranged, obviously I don't have enough little doodles to fill in the whole frame, but these give me like a, a starting point. And then I can kind of just grab some brushes and I think I flattened the layer as well for just my sketch layer. And then I just use variations of the pre-existing doodles to fill in the rest. And I'm really liking this overall method for notepad design. Um, obviously I'm, I, I sort of lean towards a notepad that has an artistic border. Um, I've done some that are like a feature illustration. Do, do you know what I mean when I say that? Like some notepads like have art on all four sides and some will just have like a doodle at the top or at the bottom or something like that. I don't know, I'm, I keep leaning towards these like fully illustrated four side notepad designs. I think they're nice. It definitely takes longer. And as I'm getting, oh, here's the finished sketch, just so you can see what it looks like when I finished the line work. Yeah, because it's kind of hard to film on the iPad and, and show you like a color accurate version. But this is where I finished. And then I always go color these like, I go sit on my couch to color. I don't film the whole thing sitting at my filming table. For obvious reasons, it takes a long time to color. And also, uh, if, if you had told me when I was a kid that I would be like a professional colorer as a job, um, I would have probably had a lot less anxiety about the future because that's probably all I wanted to do. And I had a lot of time in between wanting to do that and actually doing it. There's like a whole decade in there where I did other stuff. But here I am, back to being a professional colorer. Anyways, I don't remember what I was saying before about the design. Um, oh, I'm hoping to get some notepads manufactured and I suspect I'm gonna have to add in some bleed, which means like a little bit of extra design around the edges that gets cut off intentionally, just so that you're not left with like a white space at the edge of your design. And yeah, I wasn't ready for that. So I, I might have to um, add some extra bleed. And here's the sped up version of me coloring it. So you can see I did like the flat colors first and then afterwards I went in with the, okay, I did the flat colors with the um, um, oil pastel brush and I did the pencils with the 6B brush. Uh, those are all come with the ones that come with Procreate. And this is the finished um, design. I put my logo in the middle because I was like, is someone gonna screenshot this? and use it for a notepad, please, please don't do that. Um, but I put my logo there, <laughs> repetitively, I don't know. Okay, so now we're done the design work and we are moving into the making of the notepad phase. Um, like I mentioned, I'm making these as prototypes. So this exact one is not getting sold. I, I did give it to my mom, but in general, um, I've made tons of notepads and I have sold my handmade ones. I'm just getting to a point where I need a volume of products and uh, hand making them is very time consuming. So the first step, obviously I cut these all out. Um, I have this paper guillotine. Um, I've mentioned before that it, uh, I can't find it online. I got it on clearance at Staples. It's a Xerox brand paper cutter with a laser guide. Um, I will link a similar Xerox paper cutter, but I, I can't find one with a laser that I can recommend. So, but it's not really necessary as long as you just like have a 
good paper cut. I, I don't know. I was doing this originally with like a ruler and an X-Acto knife on a cutting mat. So you don't even need the, the fancy tool. You can just make it by hand. Um, and you can, your, your paper cutter will determine how many layer or how many sheets you can do at a time. And this one, um, I'm sure you can do more, but I only usually like to do two to three sheets at a time because I'm paranoid about them moving. Eventually, well, if I'm not, if I'm getting these manufactured, I'm not going to bother, but you can buy like a heavy duty paper trimmer. Um, they're on, I've seen them on Amazon for like 300 bucks or so. Um, and they look pretty awesome. They have like a clamp, so you don't have to worry about the paper moving when you're cutting it. But there's my little stack when I'm done. And um, my usual notepad tutorial, this is like an abbreviated version, but I get some chipboard for the back and just cut it to size. And this, I, the chipboard, I, I'm not gonna put through the paper cutter. I, I don't think it would, maybe it would work. But usually the chipboard is in much bigger pieces. This is just a small one I had an off cut of. So I trace the shape and size of the notepad on it and then just use the old X-Acto knife and the ruler, cut it down to size. If you haven't seen any of my other notepad videos, um, I've gone over this process in much more detail in like my to-do list notepad video. Um, that one is my most popular video. So a lot of people know me for notepads, which is pretty funny because notepads is like just one of a bajillion things I do. Um, but hey, happy to be known for any kind of stationary craft. If you're just making this for yourself, then here's just a couple little tips. Um, for backing card, I like to use basically any heavy cardboard scrap that I can find. Not like box cardboard, like a shipping box, but um, even like a cereal box container, like that's the right thickness in my opinion, because I like notepads to have a flexible backing, but not too heavy. Um, I also save, like if I get an art print, often there's a piece of uh, cardstock or uh, chipboard in with the art print to stabilize it, so I save those. And um, yeah, you can just, and, and also like uh, painting uh, packs of, of paper, like watercolor paper, often have a hard back uh, or something at the back to stabilize it. So I use those as well. Um, and if you, so, so that I just do that if I'm making things for myself because um, it doesn't need to be a product I sell. And um, if I, for paper, I like to use, um, you can use regular printer paper, but I use like a heavier printer paper. Um, a 28 pound one, which I think is just like, it just feels a little bit luxurious to write on and it's not super expensive. I will, like I said, I'll link the exact paper that I use. It's a, it's a Xerox brand, I think. I'll link it down below. What I'm doing here is just tapping the paper so that the pages all line up evenly. And I'm just, just gonna use a little scrap of cardstock here because I'm gonna use some binder clips to clamp it together for gluing. And I find that they can put little imprints on the paper. So I use that little piece in front. Um, it's down lower than the glue, it doesn't get glued, but I use that just to protect the paper. And to glue it, I just brush on a couple thin layers of this glue. It is Mod Podge, um, it's one I always use. I am gonna do a video coming up comparing a bunch of different glues um, because I'm curious. And I know there's also a thing called padding compound, which is glue specifically for this job. I don't know if it's gonna be any better or different. Like I've been using this um, satin Mod Podge for ages and it's never let me down, but I am curious. So if that sounds interesting, let me know. If I if you want me to do more like experimental notepad supply videos, I was thinking about doing one about like finishing techniques, whether it be stamping or packaging or magnets, um, just different ideas. I don't know, I, I'm trying to diversify my, my notepad content. Anyways, this is this is the last step. So after it's all glued, I leave it to dry and then notepad's all done. I've never had a page fall out of a notepad using this method, so pretty confident about it. And yeah, I hope you found that interesting. I will show you the finished result momentarily and I'm very proud of it. Even uh, the illustration won me over in the end and I wasn't 100% sure that it would. Okay, here's the finished product. I even turned on my cold lighting and ruined my mood here to show you <laughs> how cute it looks. Um, so this is it up close. It has the lines. Uh, actually, I don't even need to explain it. I, or you just saw the video on how I made this, but it's got the glue binding on top and um, I didn't put a stamp on the back. Sometimes I normally do, but this one is a gift, so it's not gonna be uh, stamped. 
And yeah, I just think it turned out so lovely. Uh, all the pages are attached, none of them are falling out. That is a concern I used to have when I started making them, but this method works really well. Everything stays attached and uh, you could also stick some magnets on the back. Maybe I'm doing a very chaotic job of showing this. I'm very sorry if so. Uh, you can put some magnets on the back of this if you want to put it on the fridge or something. Anyways, that's the notepad video. <laughs> Hope you liked it. Uh, if you want to watch more videos of me making cool stuff or hanging out or just living a busy artist life, check out my other videos and please consider subscribing. All right. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great day wherever you are. Bye.